but clear skies straight across by Mr. Park. Henry, good to see you, Henry. Well, likewise, I'm sure, sir. You will see many familiar faces. Many of the regulars have joined us, sir. Mr. Wynne Park, across the hall from you, real gentleman. I have crossed the Atlantic six times with him. Generous man, if you know what I mean. I must ask for another stateroom. Mrs. Paradine, this one is exquisite. Every detail is... Please see what you can arrange. Mrs. Paradine... Everything is booked solid. It's impossible. I can't stay here. Please, any room at all, just far from this one. Yes, of course. Thank you. Your poor dear Aunt Grace, how sad for you, her passing. Well, I took matters into my own hands as soon as I realized that you were sailing with us. You will dine at our table, of course, and no moments alone. I'll see to that. And my granddaughter, Lulu, she'll keep you company. And my baby, Charlie. <laughs> Lulu, don't slump. It's so lovely to see you. Don't look now. That's the infamous Molly Brown. Her husband made a fortune in silver and gold mines. They say he tried to shoot her twice. It was a terrible scandal. She's crude, but one can't ignore her. She's far too rich. Oh, and the Strausses. They own Macy's department store. Jewish. Oh, and Benjamin Guggenheim. <laughs> Most people are content to bring back souvenirs of the Eiffel Tower from Paris. It's bringing back his mistress. He's not sitting at our table. Uh, oh, the Wideners. Al, Lola, the, the, the Wideners. Last time I even sat at his table. 25 years, is it? With the White Star Line. The world's greatest ship and the world's greatest captain. <laughs> Here's to a rip-roaring maiden voyage for us and the Titanic. Well, since it is my last voyage, I was hoping for something a little calm. How fast are we going, Captain? I have a wager on it with Allison here. I say we're traveling in excess of 20 knots. You will excuse me. Captain Smith doesn't like to talk about speed, but I think it's safe to say that Mr. Allison owes you some money. <laughs> now, Mrs. Brown, would you care for some more oysters? Ooh, don't mind if I do. <laughs> They're delicious. Uh, Big and fat and juicy. Oh, and some more, some more wine, please. Lafitte Rothschild. We don't get wine like this in Denver. 
<laughs> Boy, you built some robo here, Mr. Ismay. Well, I'm glad you're impressed, Mrs. Brown. Yes, I was determined to create a ship for the 20th century. One must be a visionary. Now, uh, may I recommend the pressed pheasant or perhaps the uh, poulard poché à l'estragon? <laughs> <laughs> no skinny little poulard for me. Ah. I'm having roast mutton <laughs> and yo a mouton. You speak French? I hired a French tutor. He pulled a cork from a champagne bottle and put it in my mouth. The cork, not the bottle. <laughs> he said it had forced me to hold my mouth open when I talked. Well, I told him most people preferred me with my mouth shut. <laughs> we are forgetting Mrs. Paradine. All this festivity. Poor darling, your dear Aunt Grace passed recently in London. All those months alone in London taking care of the burial and your aunt's affairs. I suppose things were jumbled. We promised your husband that we'd watch over you on the voyage home. That's very kind of you. The Paradines have the most beautiful estate on the Hudson. <laughs> and your little girl is a dream. Miss Foley, could I have the pleasure of a dance? Oh, well, Lulu well, would love to dance, Mr. Park. As long as it isn't that abominable turkey trot. <laughs> One wonders what the world is coming to sometimes. Posture, Lulu. Such a charming man. And so very handsome. Our little Lulu could do worse. Our little Lulu couldn't do any better. He's shrewd, <laughs> intelligent. And loaded. Yeah. A marriage made in heaven. <laughs> you must long to dance to a young woman like you. It's so sad you're stuck in black with the whole crossing. It doesn't do much for your delicate complexion. I suppose your aunt's husband is grieving. The marriage only lasted a year, Mrs. Foley. I don't know where Mr. Santalisa is now. Why, well, she gave up everything for that scoundrel. Well, what can you expect, an Italian? He was after her inheritance. I said so. Poor woman. On the contrary, Mrs. Foley. My aunt had no regrets. In fact, just before she died, she told me it was a glorious year. No matter what the price, it was worth a lifetime. Would you excuse me? I have such a terrible headache. Oh, poor lady. Let me help you to your room. No, no, please. Please continue with your dinner. Bella, wait. Go back to your dancing partner, Mr. Park. You're jealous. You're jealous. Now, you know how I feel. You can imagine what's been happening to me all these years. Hetty Paradine has everything your family's ever wanted for you. Money and a pedigree. He's a kind man, a gentleman, a good husband. Well, your marriage must have pleased your father and your mother. The parents are both dead now. The past is the past. Irretrievable. It's been with me every moment of every day. Do you think it's been the same for me? Oh, Bella. Oh, Bella. I'm married when... I never expected to see you again. You broke my heart. And like hell, see the world. How are we supposed to see the world, Philip? Stuck in this bloody broom closet. Wynn Park, I'm expecting a Marconi gram. Oh, yes, sir, Mr. Park. There's so many messages coming and going. Oh, there we are. There you are, sir. I'll be expecting several others. Uh, I'd like them delivered immediately. Right, sir. Smooth sailing all the way. I hope so. Cheers, Governor. It's a double eagle. It's a twenty-dollar piece. Look at that. Tin mines. Didn't that wire say tin mines? Oh, you split up with me. Right. Uh... Oh. <laughs> Please forgive me, I was a bore. Oh, well.
a red dress. Do you see that? A red dress. It can't be. She's in mourning. She appears to have recovered. <laughs> Palm du chess. Where I come from, we call a spud a spud. She's not sitting here. I won't have it. This is a disgrace. Hazel. It's only been a few months since her Aunt Grace passed away. She ought to show some respect, even though her aunt was fast. This is Paradigm. You feeling better? I am, Mr. Isney. Thank you. I feel queasy. Mr. Park? Oh, he had urgent business. I understand the Bolivian government has given them permission to open some tin mines. That's dangerous. That, that Zapata fellow? <laughs> That's Mexico, my dear. It's the same thing. Oh, here he is. I knew he wouldn't disappoint us. Evening. I'm sorry I'm late. <laughs> so it's mining, is it? <laughs> Takes perseverance. Me and my man, we never gave up when others did. Our little Johnny mine turned out to be the richest gold vein in the world. Of course, it didn't exactly buy us happiness. Well, money doesn't always get us what we want. Mm. You unlucky in love, Mr. Park? <laughs> my family tree is missing a few branches. <laughs> I set out to prove to a young lady's parents that I was worthy of her. And she married someone else. Mr. Park, Thank you, very much. you could have any woman in the world. Except the one I want. Oh. You'll be going there, Mr. Park, to Bolivia? Yes, as soon as we land in New York. Oh, you can come to our Lulu's birthday party. I mean, one little week. The Bolivian government can wait. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Paradox. Will you tango? I thought you'd never ask, Mr. Park. My, my dear, are, are you forgetting you are in mourning? I've mourned enough. Oh, my. I feel absolutely faint. Dancing the tango? We haven't even finished the first course. They're just skipping to dessert. I believe you went up for an early breakfast. <laughs> Mrs. Paradine, I have wonderful news for you. I have managed to convince the Countess of Rothes that she absolutely must take this state room. Her servants have packed all her things, so here I am, ready to move you. Move me? Well, you weren't happy in this suite, and it's my job to make you happy. Oh, yes. Well, that won't be necessary. I'm quite happy here now. Yes, but I've arranged for it. The Countess of Rothes... It took a great deal of maneuvering. I, I've changed my mind. I'm completely comfortable here. Thank you. Yes, but what do I tell the Countess of Rothes? When? Good morning. Good morning. You couldn't sleep? No. Me neither. And I was up thinking about you, and life, and your daughter, Claire. She's such a tomboy. Hates fancy clothes. She's very bright, curious. She loves dogs. She loves horses. She rides for hours with her father. What are we going to do? All those years I've wondered about you, where you were, and what you were doing. And now you're here. With you? For four days. They say we're at the dawn of a new age. The fires below are sending 50,000 horsepower to the propellers. Who knows what kind of progress 
we'll see in the next hundred years. Well, soon we'll be flying across the Atlantic, in airplanes. <laughs> but nothing will ever be like this again. Nothing like the Titanic. A boat this big, powerful, and so beautiful. Mm -hmm. There's a rumor we'll be landing a day early. Only rumors. Captain Smith, could we bribe you to take your time? <laughs> to meander, of course, a little. I know what you mean. I suppose I will miss all of this. There's magic to it. I enjoy it most right here behind the wheel. It's almost sacred. May I steer it? Evan, what's that? <laughs> oh, you're right. It is magical. Good. I can feel the power beneath my feet. Are you sure that you know the way to New York? <laughs> no, I don't. Maybe I'll just turn it around and go back to England. How does that sound? loses his head when a woman throws herself at him. But he danced with me. Well, it wouldn't have hurt for you to throw yourself a little, Lulu. Get your shoulders back. You're going to get a hump. from the hallway waiting for your father. <laughs> wrong door. Yes, wrong door. Uh, it's the next one. I've never been in such a grand house before. And there you were. You, you, were, you were playing the piano. Chopin. I didn't know what it was. I only knew it was the most beautiful music. And the sun was coming through the windows and everything was golden. The sun, you. The dress. The dressing gown. And it was yellow, it wasn't golden. Anyway, the door was supposed to have been closed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Lady lost her key. It was see-through. Your dressing gown. Yes, <laughs> it was. When you stood up, I could see you through it. I thought you were going to die. We found your room. Mm-hmm. Well, can you get the key in the lock? Can you? I'm trying. Can you get the key in the lock? Can you? Sunday. Everyone's at church service except us. We're the sinners. Mm. You knew all the sailing on the Titanic, didn't you? Yes. 
wasn't fate at all. You planned it that way. Yes, but it isn't enough. God, I want to be with you always. Come to Bolivia. Oh, I know I have no right to ask, but come. When? Come with me. I don't know. I just don't know. Does it have to end? Paradigm. You look happy. I am. I think I am. Mrs. Astor. Oh, may... please call me Madeline. Madeline, may I talk to you? I feel like I'm going to burst. Of course. Shall we? <laughs> what was it like when Mr. Astor got his divorce? It's painful for everyone. I felt terribly guilty. But we've embarked on a new adventure. I try not to look back. Are you contemplating divorce? I have a young daughter. I could never leave my daughter. Oh, but surely you could arrange something with your husband. He would never let her go. I couldn't hurt him either. In a way, I feel indebted to him. He helped me at a terrible time in my life. He was, he was my knight in shining armor. <laughs> You're in love with Mr. Park, aren't you? Yes. I have loved him for many years. These things seem like they can never work out, but somehow they do. Life is so short, Isabella. There's hardly any time, is there? Uh, I will never get through all these. Yes, Mom. I wish to send a wire. Right then. Address at the top. My husband is at our home on the Hudson. This has to go out immediately. Do you understand? Yes, Ma'am. Uh, the thing of it is... Uh, we're uh... bogged down here right now. The wireless broke down last night and wasn't back in commission until five this morning. We've got quite a backlog, Ma'am. Please, this has to go out immediately. You have to send it right away before I... Be for Mum. Before I lose my strength. Before I change my mind. Please, uh, just send it. Well, uh, don't worry, Mum. It's very urgent. Promise me. We'll do the best we can, eh? Some bloody bloke's gonna get the shock of his life. Isabella. Did you see it? The iceberg? I've done a terrible thing. What? I sent out of your wireless. Yes. I can't give you up. I won't. I've told him all about us, and I've told him I'm going to Bolivia with you. the excess pressure from the boilers. Please bring your life jacket. They're not actually going to put it in lifeboats, are they? No, no. But put on your life preservers just as precautionary measure. They're on top of your armoires. Dress as warm as you can, darling. Why? If there's really no danger. You just do as they ask. Put on a few layers and a warm coat. I'll meet you upstairs in ten minutes. Henry, what's the truth? I don't know any more than you do, sir. I'm just doing what they tell me. Captain Smith, I have a word with you, sir. Uh, 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 getting jolly 
I'd appreciate a true appraisal of our situation. We've been damaged badly. How badly? Our ship has a couple of hours. This information must not be circulated for obvious reasons. Are there any rescue ships on the way? So far, we have been unable to contact any vessel near enough to help us in time. It is imperative that we get the women and children into the lifeboats. You might want to see to Mrs. Paradise without delay. Yes, sir. Mr. Park, there are lifeboats for only half of those on board. I see. Thank you for your candor. Godspeed, you, Captain. And to you, sir. It's burning. You look so grave. Aren't there enough boats? Yes. No, they're taking the women and children first as a precautionary measure. Then I'll wait and go when you do. You have to get on with the other women. We'll be together in a few hours. In heaven or in hell. <laughs> we'll be ready if just a minute. Come to me the truth. We have about an hour before the ship sinks. I'll take you to a lifeboat and find you later. In a few hours, we'll be having breakfast up at some freighter. Is that a promise? Now, ladies and gentlemen, would you all please line up by the door and please keep order here. That is the main thing. Yes, come on, ladies. Come on, ladies. Come on, ladies. Come on, ladies. Look what I found. It's so dark down there. It's so cold. Oh, it'll only be for a few hours. There's ships on the way here right now. I just feel better if we were together. So would I. But the captain was adamant when I gave him that word. To Bolivia. We'll get there, won't we? Next year, we'll be sitting on our terrace in La Paz, looking down at all the red tile roofs with Claire, too. There's something I must tell you about Claire. I love her. Without even knowing her, I love her. Almost as much as I love her mother. Think of the stories we can tell her. We'll look back on this as a real adventure. It's got everything. Action. Danger. We'll brag about this to our grandchildren. Grandma and Grandpa were on the Titanic. Move it, everybody. Move it along. Come on. Come on. We haven't got all day. That's it. Ah! Oh, I'm an excellent swimmer, remember? When I can't go without you. Yes, you can. One foot in front of the other. Tell me about her again. She's smart. Very smart. All right. Oh, tell me about her horse. He's an Indian paint. She calls him paint. When I'm trying, I'll Keep say moving. I am. Keep moving. Coming through. We don't have much time. Go, just get into the boat. When I can't leave you. You couldn't abandon your daughter. We both knew that deep down. We had a few days. That's all it was. Please don't say that. Now, you must go now. Get into the boat. Claire's waiting for you. When she's yours. Claire is our daughter.
che succede? Deve andare sola. No, papà, no! Deve venire con me, no! Non no, ti voglio lasciare, ti voglio lasciare! Vai, figlio, vai, bravo! Vai, ciao, bella, ciao! Ti amo! Ti amo, ti caro, ti amo! Can't let the father go. No. They told us to wait near the ship for survivors. When the ship goes down, she'll take everything with her. Those people. The tanks. We still have room on this boat. Trust me, ma'am, we'll go back, all right? We just have to wait a bit until things calm down. There could be hundreds of people trying to get on this little boat. We'll end up saving nobody. We can't live on this people. Go back now before they're all gone. Do you hear me? Please, sir. We must go back. It's all right. We'll go back. Come on, let's go. You fools. They'll drag us under. They'll swamp us. 
This is Wynn Park. Mr. Wynn Park. He needs some dry clothes and a blanket and, and something hot to drink, some soup. He needs a doctor. Is there a doctor?
go to the captain. Tell him the ship can't leave yet. Madam. You don't understand. My husband is still out there. He, he may be on a raft trying to get to us. Mrs. Astor, we've searched the waters. There are no more survivors. I'm sorry. Isabella. $300,000. Securities. My entire Paris wardrobe. Twelve pairs of shoes. Good shoes. Two, three. Your dog? Don't give me that look. He sat on my lap. And Mr. Foley, whose lap did he sit on? How many people were in your boat? How many people? Twenty, thirty, I don't know. We had no room. There was room for sixty-five. I lost everything, too. Look at me. I am a sight. Not even any face powder. What about you? A healthy young man like you, whose seat did you take? It was an accident. I, I fell from the davit. How convenient. It's true. God knows I don't deserve to be here. I give my life to save one of them lost. Sorry. I don't deserve to be here either. Mrs. Paradon, you must come down below. It's cold. The ocean's so big, isn't it? It makes one feel so small, so insignificant. Maybe it's just for a moment. I said someday, someday we'll all die. Ship of widows. It's good, man, that we don't know how things are going to end in the beginning. Oh, we'd never make the journeys that we were meant to take in this life. The journeys that make us who we are. You're a good man, this one. I guess um, what I, uh, I want to say is that I, I think you're a good sailor. And I thank you. Clear that John's sons won't be coming for me. Of course they will. So many people out there. What about you, Isabella? Eddie will come, won't he? In spite of the wireless? No. No, he's a very proud man. I was going to set the world straight. And I only succeeded in hurting two more people. My husband and my little girl. He'll let you see Claire, won't he? I don't want to think about that. I guess I'm at his mercy. They're here. John's sons, I can see them. Me after all, <laughs> it will be all right, Madeline. I know it will. Thank you, Isabella, for helping me through this.
God you're home safe. Thank God. Eddie. Eddie, the wireless. I'm, I'm sorry. What wireless? I, I sent you a wireless. I have to explain. I forgot any wireless. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Nothing else matters except your home. Yes, you're right. I'm home.